What's up, Lisa fans? I'm Steph with Creation, and welcome back to our virtual weekend featuring the cast of Lucifer. Just wanted to remind you that the top tipper wins a five minute one on one video meet and greet with DV right after this panel. So make sure your top supporter information is updated with your current email address. To find that, just scroll underneath the stage screen. You'll see where there's a little uh, trophy icon. Just to the right of that, you're gonna see a green link that says complete your top supporter information and that's where you're gonna enter your email address. Also, if you'd like to tip, click the green tip button on the bottom left-hand corner of your stage at screen. And also remember that tipping is done as soon as the panel is over. So any tips made after that will not be counted towards the total. All right, coming up is a man who's played a doctor, a lawyer, chief of staff, president, prosecutor, principal, vampire hunter. But to us, he's our frustrated but loyal angel. Please welcome D.B. Woodside. Hey, D.B. Hey. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Your whole, all your fan base is cheering for you. Oh. <laughs> well, well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I really do appreciate that. All right. So how are you doing? How's, how are you holding up? Um, I'm doing good. You know, I think it's been, I, well, I know it's been a tough year for all of us, right? So, uh, uh, but I am uh, an eternal optimist and uh, I do see uh, light at the end of the tunnel. I hope we all do finally. And I think that, you know, we'll, we'll be in a much better place by midsummer this, this, this year. So uh, let's just all hold on tight. Let's wear our masks, socially distance, wash our hands, and we'll be seeing our loved ones soon. That's right. Well, at least we get to see you, our loved one, virtually. And I know that your fans have been uh, clamoring to ask questions. So do you mind if we jump into it? Let's jump in. All right. This is from Ashley from Pittsburgh. What has been your favorite episode to direct and favorite one to act in? Well, this is very simple, Ashley, because I've only directed one episode. Uh, so that's my favorite, uh, which will be coming up in uh, season six, uh, episode eight. Favorite episode to act in? That is an impossible question to answer. Um, I will try. Um, there's no way I can pick one. Um, but what I can do is maybe pick, uh, quickly go through and pick one from uh, every season. Um, I think, going backwards, I think sixth season, uh, the season that we've been shooting, it's probably going to be episode six, directed by one of my favorite uh, directors, Claudia uh, Yap. Yami, Yame, um, Yami, Yame, I don't know how to pronounce her name. I'm sorry, Claudia. Um, but I think that's going to be my favorite um, episode to, to act in uh, this season. Um, season five, uh, favorite episode, I believe, is one you guys haven't seen yet. And, uh, and, and I'll just leave it at that. But it, it, it does involve uh, uh, Tom uh, and our dear old dad, uh, played by Dennis Haysburg. Uh, season four uh, would probably be the episode um, about the uh, LAPD, uh, um, uh, the one where uh, Amenadiel uh, realizes that he's, you know, even though he's an angel and they don't necessarily see race uh, in heaven, that they, they do see it down on, on earth. Um, and I believe that was... In episode five or episode eight in uh, season four, I'm not sure. Uh, in, in season three, my favorite episode would probably again be one that's directed by Claudia. Um, can you tell she's kind of my one of my favorite directors? Um, and that was the one where I think Pierce and Amenadiel get into a fight and they destroy Lux. Um, uh, and season two would be the one uh, uh, I love this one uh, where Tom and I, uh, it's a, a flashback episode and you see Lucifer in that 70s suit. Uh, it was a standalone episode and Tom and I had a lot of fun. Uh, and in season one, um, it would probably, probably, probably be either the pilot or the, no, no, no. Season one was uh, the, the, the Wings episode where uh, Lucifer and Amenadiel team up. Um, to try and find Lucifer's wings. And it's the first time that Amenadiel meets Chloe. So those would be my favorite uh, episodes to act in. Ah, are you a fan of the show as well? 
I am. Yeah. Can you tell? Yeah, uh, no, just, <laughs> just a little bit. Just a little, a little bit. bit. Yeah. <laughs> I think I, you yeah. know the episodes better than we do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't necessarily know, know the, ti the, the, the uh, titles offhand, but I can always remember them by, by what was going on um, within them. So, yeah. Very good. Okay. The next question is from Rebecca. Um, without giving us any spoilers, what are you most looking forward to this upcoming season? Without giving any spoilers. Um, that's hard. Uh, in season 5B, which is about to drop, um, there is an episode where, listen, Tom is always great. Uh, he's He's a phenomenal actor, but there is an episode where he has to play both Lucifer and Michael in what I would say is the longest scene that we've ever done for the series Lucifer. And he is jumping back and forth. I believe it took us, I want to say it took us at least two days to, to shoot that scene. Uh, which is a which is a long time, um, and Tom was absolutely breathtakingly brilliant. Um, and since we're sitting there watching it, um, you know we haven't seen it right. So he's playing both characters, but but he has to jump out, change clothes, get get this, the, the scar attached and then jump back in and play the opposite side. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to, to seeing that episode when it's all cut together. Uh, I'm gonna be seeing it at the same time you all will be seeing it. Um, but I have a feeling that's gonna be uh, a performance to be remembered. He was just extraordinary. Uh, so that's the one that I'm excited to see. Wow, that sounds great. Yeah, I'm sure we can all, uh, we all can say we can't wait for that. Uh, okay, our next question is from Avia Tico. Uh, did you have any input into your character's development or journey throughout the series? Not as much as I would have liked. Uh, <laughs> I'm always going to be honest. Um, it was... This is what I will say. Uh, for all the shows that I've done, this was the most open show. Um, the, the, the writers truly wanted to hear from you. They, they, they truly wanted to hear um, um, what you thought. Um, and, but look, I mean, I'm, I, I have strong opinions. Um, uh, I, I don't think that's a, that's, that's a surprise to, to anyone that, that, that knows me. Um, uh, I don't think that's a bad thing. Um, I think when you're an artist, uh, and in particular, uh, uh, an artist of color, it's important in this business and in this industry to um, be authentic and to and to own your voice. Uh, so I don't apologize for that. I don't think um, anybody should. Uh, I think it's important. Um, that being said, um, they were really open. Uh, um, uh, I was very, very lucky. All of us are 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 very lucky because um, Joe and Ildi are incredible human beings. Um, very, very, very loving, and um, not to insult anybody, but by far the best bosses that I have ever worked uh, for. So, um, uh, would would I like to have had more input into my character? Yes, of course. I think a lot of us, you know, would would like to. Um, have had more input, but they they had a particular vision for the show. Um, they saw it a certain way, and um, I take my hats off to them and 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 uh, respect them tremendously. Um, so yeah, yeah, but that's a, I think that's a pretty good answer to your question. Yeah, it's a it's a great answer. I mean, what if you could have contributed something? What what would have what would it have been? Um, I think it would have been interesting to see some of the characters, uh, have separate journeys. Um, 
I, you know, I, I like multi-layered stories. Um, and the more that I write, the more that I direct, and I'm becoming much more familiar with the format of TV, um, a lot of times you will have an A, B, C, or D storyline. Um, and I think what a lot of writers like to do is try and incorporate the B, C, and D storyline somehow into the A storyline. That's not necessarily my favorite format. I actually think that you can have a B, a C, a D storyline that never intersect with the A storyline until the very end of uh, a season. Um, that so that you can have characters who are having their own independent journeys. Um, it doesn't. It's not necessarily something that's that's large. I mean, you take a look at uh, a show like Better Call Saul. Um, you look at the character of of, of Mike, um, one of my favorite shows. You'll see Mike, who might have one, especially early on, I think in the first or second season, who might have one, maybe two scenes. That's it. But he's serving a long story arc that that we will watch and find out. Um, towards the towards the end of the season and maybe at some point that will intersect with the a storyline and they will come together um i think um and like i said i say this respectfully um i think since since we were a show that started out on network television that there's a, a very strong format that that network television has and i think as we went on to netflix that format started to loosen and loosen and loosen, uh, which was great. I think Netflix, I sing Netflix, Netflix's praises all the time, except when they canceled away. I'm still really hurt about that Netflix. I don't know why you guys did that. But anyway, um, uh, being on Netflix allows, uh, I think, artists to kind of uh, really um, expand from that, from that format and do some different things and do some uh, tell some longer stories. So I definitely think that once we got on Netflix, uh, that that's what Lucifer started doing. Um, I just wish that we would have kind of, um, explored that a lot more, um, gone, gone a lot further, but at the same time, um, I'm able to kind of sit back and say, um, I might respectfully disagree with some of the things that, that we did or, or, some of the things I, I, I might feel that we didn't spend enough time on, but you also have to like, uh, as I just a little sports thing, recognize game, right? So what Joe and Ildi did made this a very popular show. It made this a very successful show. Uh, no one can deny that. No one can, can take that away from them. So what they did was incredible and what they did worked. Um, so we all, have our opinions and 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 what we you know every actor what we may or may uh, what we may have liked what we maybe wanted to see or what uh, what we wanted to explore but I don't think there's any actor uh, in this cast um, who can ever say that that what Joe and Ildi uh, did didn't work it obviously worked it worked very well and so I just always want to give them. Uh, um, the, the respect and praise that they deserve, as well as when I share what uh, my opinion is respectfully. Gotcha. Well, you know, it definitely works because you got a lot of fans who love the show, love you, love the cast. And, uh, and we know that we're, I, you know, it, it, we could definitely know that we'll be seeing your style and your projects, I'm sure, to come as well. Um, okay. Shell QE uh, has uh, says they loved you on 24 as well. <laughs> um, do you have any stories from the set and filming that show? Um, I just remember uh, being so nervous to meet Dennis Haysburg. Uh, uh, he was just this incredible um, force, uh, that voice, um, his acting. Um, I just looked up to him so much um, and uh, loved, loved working with him. Um, 
Uh, loved working with Kiefer. Uh, very, very intense, uh, generous actor. Um, that was just a really good time in my life. Um, and so I'm so, I mean, I was just so overjoyed that, uh, that, that we went, um, after Dennis and, uh, and, you know, I think for me, because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm old enough to, to, um, see Dennis's career, um, and how extraordinary he is. Uh, and I think some of the younger actors, um, uh, only know him from those, commercials, uh, which, which he's been, you know, great in, uh, um, um, but I, I'm very happy, uh, that, that, uh, people are going to get a chance to see, um, what made him so, uh, strong and important on, on 24, um, that now younger people are going to get a chance to, to see what that, what that power is like, um, I can't imagine anyone else playing God. Um, he is just, um, I love the guy uh, personally. Uh, uh, he's a good friend, uh, an extraordinary human being. And um, um, I think he's gonna blow people away. And I think it not just, not just with his gravitas and his power, but Dennis is hilarious in this role. Uh, so I can't wait for people to see um, how funny this guy is. Oh, good. Did you have anything to do, uh, with, with him being cast in Lucifer? Did you want to reunite the Palmer brothers? Um, how to answer this question. Um, here's the thing. I think there are a lot of people who, uh, uh, and rightly so want to take credit for, uh, for this amazing casting for, for Dennis. This is what I will say. I've been pushing for Dennis to be God for years. Um, I saw him, uh, this was, I guess a few months before COVID, I saw him at, you know, one of those, uh, one of those um, pre Emmy parties or something that, you know, um, we all kind of go to. I'm not, I'm not necessarily one that goes to a lot of those. In fact, I hadn't been in one in uh, several years, but I did go to this one with 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 my manager who dragged me. <laughs> I'm glad she did. And uh, I saw Dennis that night, and uh, you know, um, went over to him, and I I remember saying, "I'm like, listen, um, how would you feel about this?" Uh, I said, "Before I, you know, I've been talking about it for a few years." Um, uh, but before I really kind of push it hard, I want to know if this is something that that you would be interested in. And he just looked at me and he said, uh, he said, yeah. And uh, um, so, of course, I got excited because I think there's, um, you know, when you're an actor, um, uh, you quickly realize that you are only as good as your partner, right? Um, any actor that thinks that they're great alone, uh, in my humble opinion, is not really a good actor. Um, it is the people around you that make you good, that that challenge you. Um, and, uh, you know, it's why I always kind of sing the praises of, of Trisha Helfer. So I always sing the pra praises of, of, of Tom, um, uh, Kiefer, uh, Sarah, Eliza, uh, James, um, uh, Malik, uh, Leon, uh, Tehran, Christian. Um, so I always sing the praises of those actors, uh, because you can only be as good as, as your partners. And when you have a partner like Dennis, uh, you can't fail, you know? Um, and so having him back on screen, being, being able to kind of, uh, be in his presence, just, uh, elevated me, elevated my work. Um, because he, his presence, uh, demands that from you, you know? Um, so, um, now what I did hear, uh, so, so I do, I do want to always be fair is while I was pushing for Dennis, uh, to be gone on my end, I heard that, uh, Chris Rafferty and Mike Costa, uh, both fans of, uh, 24, um, were pushing for Dennis to be God on their end. 
so I like to think it was um, uh, me, uh, Chris Rafferty, and uh, Mike, uh, Mike Costa. So there you go. Kind of got them at both angles. <laughs> All right, well, I know we're really looking forward to that. Um, okay, the next question is from Ozzyols, Ozzyols from Perth. At the end of the day, how do you de-stress and relax? Oh, wow. Uh, for me, it's always, um, uh, it's always going to be uh, uh, working out. I think this year has been somewhat difficult. You know, I think we can all say that we've put on some COVID weight, myself included. Uh, you know, I'm looking forward to, to taking the extra pounds off, um, eating a lot of baked goods. Uh, but how I de-stress is, is always going to be working out. So I've been doing a lot of swimming, uh, a lot of walking, a lot of lifting. Um, it's just a way for me to clear, clear my mind, especially swimming. I mean, I've really taken up swimming in, uh, um, during, during COVID and, uh, it just really, um, takes, takes a lot of that, that, that stress away. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, that's, that's going to be a pretty, um, Easy answer. It's always going to be working out. So yeah, it's definitely uh, got that. It's it's a definite stress relief. That's for sure. Um, okay, next question is Maria from Russia. Um, how do you fly on wings? Is it difficult to shoot? Um, it's very interesting. So they have this um, this this rigging, right? Um, it can be extremely uncomfortable. Uh, Tom and I have talked about this. Um, it's this suit, right? So they put this harness suit on uh, and it's like a, a giant onesie, right? So you step into it. Um, then you have to put your clothes on over it. Uh, then they have these two cables. Uh, one usually connects in the front and one usually connects in the back and the cables go down through the harness and uh, kind of grab you down below, if you know what I mean. Um, and so it can be really uncomfortable. Um, but once you're up there and they and they pull the cables, um, once you're up there, <laughs> it's a lot of fun. You know, I mean, it's just it's just a lot of fun. You feel a little bit like a, like a Peter Pan or, you know, um, they, they pull you up and you're able to kind of fly through the air. Um, and, and all the wing stuff, uh, that's something that, that they add uh, in, in, in post with a lot of, um, uh, through, uh, I think, uh, not I think, I know, uh, visual effects. Um, and so that's, uh, but that's fun. You know, it's fun to kind of uh, get that on and, and, and fly around and, uh, and get to be a kid again for uh, for 30 or 45 minutes. <laughs> yeah, it seems like it'd be kind of fun to fly. That's for yeah. sure. Yeah. All right. The next question is from Sam from the Netherlands. We've got people from all over the world here. Um, they want to know who in the cast is most like their character and who's the least like their character. Wow. That's a great question. You know what? I think it's one person. I think it's, uh, you know, this may shock people, but I'm going to say to both those questions, it's Leslie Ann. I think Leslie Ann has the strength and the power um, that that you see um, from, from, from Maze on screen. But I also think um, that when you get to know Leslie Ann, she has one of the biggest hearts. And I um, quite often would say that she, that she has a gummy bear heart. Um, so it's, you know, she's very tough and strong and, um, uh, and very smart and, and fierce and, and loyal. Um, but on the inside, she's, um, she's so sweet. She hates for people to say this, but it's true. She's so sweet. She's so sensitive. Um, she, she, she cares a lot. Um, she's a wonderful mother, um, just an extremely, uh, um, sweet, um, she has that soft gooey center, um, and she, she cares a lot. So, uh, I think it's Leslie Ann for, for, for both actually. Wow. That is a, that is a good answer. 
um, yeah, we had her earlier today for her panel, and uh, and she was she was great. And it's really nice to to know that she's got both sides to her. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. So the next question is from Sophia, and they're from Russia. If you could play one legendary movie character, who would it be, and why? One legendary movie character. What do they mean by legendary movie character? Do they, do they mean, uh, uh, like, say, a, a, a real life person, or? Um, you could. It could be. It could be a a a, a historical person, or like James Bond, or. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. So an iconic. Uh, it changes as as we get older, huh? Right. You know. Uh, you know. Um, I kind of feel like there, there, there are a few characters that I had wanted to play, um, and now I just feel like I've probably aged out of them, you know. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about. Uh, um, I, I think a, a, a character that I would love to play. Um, I think his life story is is amazing. It is um, uh, his name's Matthew Henson, I believe, and uh, he was the first person to reach. I'm going to get this wrong, please. Um, um, African American history teachers, do not shoot me. I, I I believe it was the North Pole. It might be the South Pole. I'm not. But I believe it was the North Pole. He was the first uh, first human being to reach the North Pole, um, and he wasn't credited with it uh, at the time. His um, his uh, white counterpart was. Um, and it took some time uh, for the real story to, to come out. But I just think there's something incredible about explorers, uh, people kind of um, um, risking everything to, to break a record or to get to someplace first. Um, uh, it just shows uh, how incredible the human spirit is. Uh, uh, so Matthew Hansen, I would, I would love to play him. Maybe uh, we can look forward to a future project that you develop. Yeah, well, yeah. fingers crossed. <laughs> fingers crossed. Okay, the next question is Kobe from the Philippines. What challenges did you encounter while directing your episode of Lucifer? Whoa, okay. Um, many, many. Number one, um, directing during COVID, uh, is really challenging because you just don't have the kind of time that you normally have. Uh, there are so many restrictions. People couldn't be in the same place, couldn't couldn't um, uh, mix, couldn't uh, really talk to each other uh, with because you had all the PPE on. Um, and so, so all these hours that you think you have that that you appear to have on paper uh, is not true. Um, I also think that when you're a first time director, you know, this is a business, um, filled with egos and personalities, you know, uh, that's normal. I think all of us in this business, um, um, if we don't acknowledge that, I, I don't think we're being honest, right? Uh, it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing, but it is a challenging thing. Um, and I think when you're a first time director, uh, you, you have a lot of people wanting to um, step in and make decisions for you. Um, and so every day feels, feels like a battle. Uh, I think probably the more experience you get, the less people will do that. Um, so I don't think I'm, I'm any different than any, any other first time director. Uh, every day is a battle. Um, you have to fight for your vision um, you have to know when to let it go. Um, um, but it's a, it's, it's a battle every day. It was, uh, honestly, uh, the most tired I have ever, ever been in my life mentally with the exception of being a parent, every parent understands that, um, with the exception of being a parent, um, it, it was the hardest, most rewarding job. Uh, that I've ever had. So expect to see me doing a lot more of it. Um, I, I'm really excited about that. 
and really thankful to Warner Brothers, Netflix, uh, I mean, Joe and Ildi, Joan, um, um, for giving me the opportunity to, to uh, flex my muscles in that way, to flex my imagination uh, on a show that I love with people that I care about deeply. Um, it, it, was, it was incredible, but, but I would say that every single day was a battle. Well, I know we are all looking forward to your episode, uh, not just to see the episode, but to but to see your how your see your directing vision come to life. I know we're all looking forward to that. Um, okay, Sashar from Israel uh, wants to know if there's anything you'd like to keep from set, and will you be able to? Um. I think I had this question uh, a, a little bit earlier. I tend not to be a, a prop, you know, actor, someone that uh, holds on to stuff. But it, but if there's if there's some stuff that I would, you know, some of the clothes, uh, <laughs> some of the clothes were uh, were were pretty nice. Uh, so you know, I mean, um, um, you know, Warner Brothers, if if some jeans happen to go missing, or you know, a few shirts, I don't I don't I don't know what happened to them. But, uh, you know, we'll just see what happens. Some of the clothes are nice. All right. Um, uh, this next question is for Grace. Uh, and the question is, if Amenadiel were to travel back in time, what advice would he give his past self? And if you were to be able to go back in time, what advice would you give your, back, your past self? Wow. Uh, if a man deal were to go back in time, I believe, um, the advice he would give himself would be, uh, don't be so fucking judgmental, <laughs> you know, uh, spend, spend more time, uh, with humans. You can learn from them. Um, and to, yeah, I, I, it's, I think it's that simple. It would simply be to spend more time with humans, to, to embrace humanity more, um, to not think that you're so, that you're, that you're above it all. Um, simply spend time with people. Uh, now, me going back in time, wow, what would I tell myself? Um, I think I was a, I was a kid that was due to circumstances and, uh, being, um, you know, a, a, a young black kid in a, um, predominantly, um, overwhelmingly white, uh, area, uh, that was, um, incredibly racist. Uh, I was bullied a lot, uh, picked on a lot, uh, um, I think what I'd probably tell myself is to, is to believe in your voice. I, I, I feel like, and you know, we arrive at things the time that we, that, that we arrive at things, but I think, um, I didn't believe enough in myself when I was younger. Therefore it feels like I wasted a lot of years, wasted a lot of time, um, trying to um, fit into the image that people wanted me to fit into. Uh, and I think, uh, in the last, especially the last seven or eight years, I've really shed that. And I, and I don't mean this in any, um, um, uh, offensive way, but I don't really give a shit what people think about me now. Uh, uh, I, I don't think any of us should, uh, um, as long as you have love from, from your children, um, uh, from your family, uh, a few close friends, uh, respect from people at work. Um, that's what's, that's, what's most important. Uh, just be, if you're, if you're a good person, you're a good person and, and, and you know it, so you don't have anything to prove. And so I think, you know, I would definitely go back in time and, and tell myself not to worry so much about what other people think and, um, believe in yourself a lot more. Uh, have faith in yourself because you're onto something and you have a pretty powerful imagination and you have some, some, some gifts. Um, you know, uh, don't be arrogant about the gifts, you know, you got to work for it, but acknowledge that you, that you have some gifts 
and uh, and um, work hard to uh, um, improve them and uh, just to have more faith in yourself. And I would say that to people in general, especially young people, to have a lot more faith in yourself uh, and to and to believe in yourself more than I think most of us do. Those are all words to live by. It's so important. So, so important. Um, so you mentioned in your meet and greet earlier that you are a musician. Can you talk to us a little bit about your musical background, instruments, influences? Um, I was, uh, like I said, I was a quiet kid and I always loved the, the, the piano and my mom can play piano. And my dad would kind of mess around on the um, guitar when, when I was growing up. Uh, and so I started in high school that I would kind of disappear and just uh, teach myself things on the piano. And so uh, I got pretty good and just spent years doing that. Um, and uh, I was also a dancer. So the way that I hear music um, is very uh, specific. Um, and so uh, I play uh, piano. Um, I play, uh, I used to play a, a guitar a lot better than I do now. That's definitely one of those things where, you know, uh, I gotta get back to it. You, you definitely uh, lose it if, if you don't use it. Um, but the instruments that, that I fool around on, um, you know, and that I'm, I'm decent on uh, are, are the piano and the, the guitar. Do you write music as well? I used to write a lot of music uh, when I was um, in, uh, from about 15 to about 27. It's, it's what I wanted to do. Uh, uh, I, I wanted to be a, a professional musician, do the band thing. Um, uh, I, I, I had a different type of rap back then uh, uh, that I really loved. Music is truly what I wanted to do. Um, acting just took off first. And, uh, and so I just kind of uh, sailed with the thing that was, uh, that was blowing at the time. Um, but, uh, I, I just, I love music. I still love music to this day. Um, so, um, I can tell by the way that I directed this episode, uh, this season that, you know, music still plays such a large part, um, in, in my life because I direct and choreograph, I visualize, see things to music. Um, so I have a feeling that's going to, influence a lot of the images um, that I put into um, shows that uh, um, I will direct. Uh, that's what I'm trying to do with uh, Lucifer right now. So fingers crossed. What kind of dance did you do? Oh my God, I was a huge um, um, uh, hip hop uh, break dance. Uh, um, uh, yeah, huge. Uh, both my brother and I, so I gotta give him props. Uh, but, uh, you know, we were very different dancers. My brother was more the pop locker. Um, and I was the crazy one throwing his body all on the floor, doing kind of, uh, flips, head spins, windmills, um, uh, uh, uh waving, uh, just <laughs> crazy stuff, which is probably why my body hurts so much to this day. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it. That'll do it. That's for sure. <laughs> um, Okay, uh, this next question is from Aiden from Turkey. Is there any scene that you couldn't film because you couldn't stop laughing? Oh my God, yes. Um, there is, <laughs> um, listen, I've always said that Lauren is the funniest cast member, but I wanna stress uh, because she's one of my favorite human beings in the world that Rachel is hilarious she's hilarious so lauren just beats her out just beats her out rachel is hilarious uh and since a lot of my stuff has been with rachel there are some i mean listen there there i know that there have to be some some takes some um you know b-roll where i was never able to get through a take and they had to just kind of cut um around my performance and just piece something together because rachel Rachel's hilarious and she's just so um, uh, so in the moment. Um, things come to her fast. Um, uh, the way her mind works, um, 
it's it's unbelievable. Uh, so yeah, definitely, uh, definitely things with scenes scenes with Rachel by far. Yeah. Well, we get to meet her tomorrow. So. Um, oh, fantastic! Tell her that I say hello. We will. We will absolutely. Um, okay. Uh, next question is from Nicole, also from the Philippines. How did directing an episode impact you as an actor, and how you play your character? Um, this is something that's really interesting because I will, will say that um, I think when you're an actor and you finally get behind the camera and you direct, and it's something you want to continue doing, I have a feeling, uh, someone should do a study on this, but I just have a feeling that after actors get behind the camera and then they go back in front of the camera, they're better actors. Um, not saying they were bad before, or, you know, um, 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 you know, I, like to believe that I'm, you know, I'm a pretty decent actor and, uh, and, you know, I've had a pretty, uh, cool career. Um, I just think that, um, when you get behind the camera and especially when you're in the editing room, you start to see, um, why certain things work, why you, why, why people cut the way they cut. And, and I, you know, you start to realize it's not because someone, if someone is cut differently, believe it or not, it's not, it's usually not because they gave a bad performance. Sometimes it's a lot of times it might, it, it, it has an issue to do with pace, um, uh, speed. Um, if something cuts together because they did something, um, differently in, in every take. And so you, you have to take a take that, you know, out of a one, you know, out of one to ten, might be a seven. So it's it's good, but there was a take that they had where it was just off the scales, ten. But their head was a different way, and you can't cut it together because it wouldn't make any sense. I can't tell you how that's hard for me as an actor to be editing right now and seeing certain certain things. I mean, thankfully, there's not a lot of it, but to see certain things. That that these actors did um, uh, that were incredible, um, uh, Lauren, Tom, that were incredible. But I can't use um, because there was just something that was a little a little off. Um, and I I have to go to takes that are good. I mean, the two of them are great, right? So you're always going to get really really good stuff. But as an actor, you always want to you're you're pushed that you want to choose takes that are phenomenal all the time. And now I understand why a director sometimes chooses, chooses a different take. Um, a lot of times it has nothing to do with uh, the performance and, and uh, that's, that's what I've learned. I think I've also learned, you know, when you're watching people, um, uh, myself, take after take after take, you start to see um, what works within a a lens. You know, uh, you start to see um, why there there are certain emotions, um, certain ways that people play things uh, that work better in a tighter lens. I'm sorry if I'm talking like all this technical stuff, but but in a tighter lens, you know, maybe here and why something might play better in a wider lens where, where you're seeing more, more of the room and um, uh, more of their body and as they move through, through space. So um, I think, yes, it's really affected me as an actor, really affected me. Um, uh, and so I wanna keep directing because I wanna see, and I just think as an actor, you should never uh, settle and you should, you should always, I think this is what everybody in life, but you should never settle, that you should just keep pushing and pushing and pushing. Um, so I'm gonna be really interested to uh, the next project that I do, because we're coming to the end here, uh, but the next project that I do um, to kind of take what I've learned from directing um, to throw that on as an actor and see what that does to me and does to my uh, future performances from, from this point forward. 
Well, that's wow. Yeah, that's I, I can imagine that that it would definitely impact you in that way. Yeah. Um, all right, DB, we've got time for one more question, and it's from Anka. What is the first thing you're going to do when COVID is over? Wow. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do when COVID is over is go see my mom. Uh, I haven't seen my mom in um, over a year. Uh, she's on the East Coast. Um, she's 79. Uh, so, you know, um, like so like so many of you, you know, uh, you just didn't want to risk it. You know, you just didn't want to risk it because God forbid that we catch something, right? And chances are that most of us would be okay. But, you know, uh, I, how terrible would it be to have something and to give it to your your uh you know your your mom or dad or 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 or, or grandma or granddad and and in some way be 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 responsible for for killing them you know i mean i just the uh i just the stories that i've heard and uh um, things that i've seen you know and my mom is a is, is a retired nurse you know so uh she took this very seriously i can now say that my mom has been completely vaccinated so we're all very happy about that um, but just out of an abundance of, of caution, I want to wait till I'm vaccinated uh, completely. Um, uh, hopefully one day, you know, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm like many of you waiting till my number is called. Uh, uh, so, so the first thing that I'll do uh, is go see my mom. Oh, I'm sure she cannot wait to see you. Do you guys get to Zoom at least? Yes. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, uh, you know, and that's one of the great things about COVID is, is, uh, in a weird way, I've gotten closer with my family because now we have we, we've had these kind of scheduled uh, um, on the weekend um, FaceTime talks and we're just catching up. And um, so that's that's been really nice. Not as of course, not as nice as physically touching them and, you know, getting a hug. But uh, but it's been nice. Yeah. Well, DB, thank you so much for being with us today. I know your fans are so excited to see you and uh, and we really appreciate you taking the time out to to be here virtually. Oh, thank you so much. And thank you to all of you for being here for us uh, all these seasons, for saving us more times than, than we can count. Uh, we are so, so blessed and so thankful. Uh, we appreciate you guys so much. Um, and just thank you so much, truly. All right, well, panel is done, tipping is done, and we're gonna announce the winner in just a few moments. But first, make sure you're signed up for our email list at creationent.com, and also follow us on social media at creationent, on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and at Creation Entertainment on TikTok. Okay, our winner of the five-minute one-on-one video meet and greet is Jepstein77. Jepstein77, congratulations. You're the winner of the five minute one-on-one -on -one video meet and greet. And I did see that uh, right before uh, the panel uh, ended. So congratulations. Hang out here in the chat. Um, and um, and just in case we have an issue with getting a hold of you. Um, in the meantime, we'll be back tomorrow with more content. See you then.